We're back. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Alex, for that informative session on social media. Our next speaker will be talking about innovation in pre-construction. You may remember our next speaker as he played Neo in the blockbuster movie called Matrix. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he did not play Neo in the blockbuster uh, movie called Matrix, but he does build 3D worlds for real estate developments like the Matrix. David Payne is the CEO of Inventev, an NAHB Global Innovation Award-winning company that creates immersive visualization experiences of unbuilt spaces for real estate developers to engage and delight new uh, home buyers. David himself was named in the 2017 Real Estate Hot uh, Professional List magazine as one of the most influential individuals working in Canadian real estate. David's insights about visualization technology and virtual reality in the real estate sector have been featured across many media outlets, including the Globe and Mail, Toronto Star, Buzz Buzz Home, Metro News, and many, many more. As the speaker who will be wrapping up our conference, you are all in for a very big treat. David, the stage is yours. Awesome. Well, I'm just responding some uh, some funny chat. Thank you so much, Mustafa, for the the intro, and thanks for inviting me. This is I've been really excited about this all day long. I'm actually just gonna bring out my um, my screen, my presentation here. Um, yeah. So I hope everyone's having an amazing ZoloCon. I think it's amazing that Zolo that you're doing this. I would say that uh, I'm used to the stage uh, presence, so this is really interesting experience. And I guess I'll start by saying, can everyone hear me? Because normally in person, you don't have to worry because they're literally in front of you. Um, so I hopefully everyone can hear me all right. Uh, if you can't, hopefully I'll find out by the end of the presentation. So today I'm going to talk about innovation and pre-construction. You, your voice is loud and clear. Thank you. Awesome. So I'm going to talk about some innovation and pre-con. Um, this is something I've been really interested in since 2010 uh, when I started uh, InventDev. I'm going to basically skip over the slides because uh, Mustafari did justice basically to me. I've been passionate about this industry for a long time. And basically what we do is we help builders market and sell new homes. That's pretty much what we do. Um, we've he, Mustafa, as I said, did a great job. We work with builders here and in, uh, in Canada as well as in the US. and. I'm going to start with a few jokes because I, I Mustafa, as you may recall, beginning had some really good jokes. So I got to start. So what did the resale home say to the pre-construction home? He said, one day you will grow up to be just like me. All right. Uh, next joke. What did the virtual tour say to the floor plan? said, you know, you see things so black and white. All right. I know they're pretty corny. I'm a new dad, so I'm trying to warm up my corny jokes. Um, definitely not as good as Mustafa's, but I'm trying. So let me ask the first question. Why should builders innovate the home buying, new home buying experience? I mean, new homes are selling off the selling like crazy. The market is hot. Why innovate? Any kind of thoughts? Like, why should builders even bother? Anyways, what you think about it, post me some of your answers. I might not have them all here. I'm going to start going right into it. Well, one for one, the industry's changed. I mean, I, we've seen what happened with a pandemic. So any builder who is doing the old school way of doing things, pen and paper, relying exclusively on the, on the sales center and exclusively on the model home, quickly found out that when they shut those down, they kind of had a situation on their hands. So those builders who are already ahead of the curve, thinking about the online experience, thinking about signing things digitally, all these sorts of things, we're already really well positioned for such a change. No one could have anticipated a change like this, but still it just goes to show that, you know, we have the pandemic now, in the future we might have zombies that, that come out of the ground and stuff like that. Like you have to always be ready for whatever comes your way. So the next reason is, let me see if I got any, to be relevant, that's true, to be relevant, to be noticeable for brand building. That's a really, really good one. I don't even have that in my slides. So thank you, Asad. Um, being relevant is another real reason. It's all about building a brand. I think that one of the mistakes uh, builders make is they think it's like a one and done deal. They sell out a project, they sell out a project and they're done. And they expect, you know, purchase are not going to buy again anyways for a long period of time. They don't really reflect on the brand. So looking and staying relevant and building brand awareness is a big one. So thanks for that. Um, another one, competitive advantage, definitely. Now, 
in this market, when things are so hot, it's sometimes difficult to say, well, we're going to give you a competitive advantage. And it's like, well, I sell it in a weekend anyway. So I definitely agree it's going to be give a competitive advantage. But the way I would look at that is what if you could actually sell your homes far more? So it's not only about just selling fast, but selling for more. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second. The other reason is buyer expectations are changing. Now I'm going to play a video right now. Apparently the video over hop is a little choppy. So if it, I apologize if it's like robotic and choppy, hopefully I get the message across. Let me know if the video plays. Here we go. Computer order pizza. Of course, Daniel. Fridge weather. Clear skies in 75. Trash can turn on the TV. My pleasure. Ice dispenser. Find me a dog sitter. Okay. And make ice. Pizza delivered. What's happened to my son? I think that's just what people are like now. I mean, with Progressive, you can quote your insurance on just about any device, even on social media. It'll be fine. <laughs> really? I don't know. So did that video come through or did it kind of look choppy? Anyhow, if the video didn't come through, uh, basically what it was is this young person doing all these a little choppy, but hilarious. Awesome. So it did kind of come through. But really the point is the younger generation, they're used to these things. Uh, things like VR, AR, uh, online shopping, all these online shopping. Like who would actually want to talk to, to, to someone? I think things are changing where... The agent role is just as important as before, but sales agents really need to accommodate the needs in the way that people want to buy homes. So it's not so much about you must follow our very rigid process of giving you nothing in online and we're going to make you line up a sales center and you might have to stay up overnight and then you're going to have to buy a new home. That is like a, a rigid way of and it's a terrible buying experience. I think with the pandemic, as I'm going to get into, I think the buying experience has just gotten better because the information is now online. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, so let's move on to the next thing. Why innovate? Thing about that drives, that it's difficult in this, this new home uh, experience is that it's all about in the past, long lineups, pressure sales, people come in, they have to make a decision in five minutes, they end up buying, they don't know what they bought, they end up you know, basically killing the deal in the cooling off period. It doesn't have to be like that, like really, the new home buying experience could be amazing. It doesn't have, you don't have to get to the finish line by pressuring people. You can get to the finish line by providing an amazing buying experience. And that's something that I'm really hoping that this pandemic is gonna start to, to kind of nurture because it's been really hard for builders to, to kind of move away from something that so-called has been working forever. So the next one is increasing perceived value. So kind of to my joke there, you look at a black line and a lot of builders sell off the black line but again, you wouldn't buy a car off a black line. You wouldn't buy necessarily a toaster off a black line. Why are you buying a home off a, off a black line? Really what we're trying to do is show the builder, hey, look at the difference. You know, I'm, I'm not just building a home. I'm building a house. I'm building some, a, a place where you can live. So, so if you look at the Minto project we did on the right, you can see like this is not your, you can't tell that from a black line floor plan. So it's like, why not show your brand? Why not show the product that you're actually offering to purchasers and do it in the best way possible? Next reason, and, and this is something, again, a passionate thing, increasing sales conversions. One of the challenges in the building industry we find is that a lot of the metrics that are measured, it's all about lead volume. It's about how many people can we get to the sales center. But my but it's more than just lead volume. It's about lead quality. Like, do you really want your salespeople wasting their time and wasting people's time? We just stayed up all night, not even knowing really what the project's about. Why not drive qualified leads to the sales center so that you can have less people, but give them amazing like white glove service where people just go in and they just buy a home and they enter not stressed out, but they enter so excited. Like that's the way things should be. Um, so the other reason is cost. It's cost effective to do things this way. So look at it. We have large sales centers where builders spend a ton of money on these massive spaces when instead they can use smaller boutique spaces that have much more of a digital presence that ironically they're smaller, but they can show everything, right? Using what we call virtual model homes, you can show every single floor plan versus a big sales center where you're basically using it to show like a gallery of images and posters. The next thing is the physical scale model. So you've probably seen many times in these sales centers where they'll spend like a hundred grand on a small like Lego looking version of a condo um, versus a virtual version where they can actually go up close and see that. Um, physical models versus virtual models. Now this one, the physical model, the tactile experience, it is a good experience. I'm not trying to say we're 
necessarily eliminate the physical model, but I think the virtual model home, which is very similar in the sense of the experience, minus obviously the tactical, uh, tactile like touch and feel part, uh, I think the virtual model can complement that where it can show all the other options and the other plans, right? Because it's people don't just buy one plan, they wanna see the other plans too. And then the final one is lead spend. A lot of marketing agencies will spend a ton of money on like TV, radio, you name it, to try to get leads to the event. But what if you could increase your lead conversions? Like if you could increase your lead conversions by 100%, you need half the leads, right? So why not just focus a little more energy on the lead conversion and less on the, we're just going to send the leads into the sales center and let the agent convert. No, maybe instead give the agent the tools that they need so they can create that delightful buying experience as opposed to doing the hand waving like I'm doing right now to try to sell a home. Um, so now I'm going to shift to innovations before the pandemic. Then I'm going to go to innovations during the pandemic. And then I'm going to kind of do a little bit what's going to happen after the pandemic just to keep things a little bit relevant. Um, I'm at 519. I started a little late, so I'm going to have to kind of speed through this a little bit. We have the tra tra traditional sales center. These are the things that ever that builders have been using for decades. Um, expensive sales centers, floor plan signs, model homes, scale models, all that kind of stuff. So before the pandemic hit, there's really kind of, there's a few innovations, uh, key ones I'll focus on. One is the virtual models and virtual scale models. So I'll just kind of show you a very quick uh, video. So this is a virtual model. So you see it's on a touch screen. And basically the way it works is then customers can actually tap on the screen, they can move around. Um, I'm gonna actually, given time, I'm gonna fast forward. You can see the views, you can walk through all the different units, um, you can spin. This is what I meant by the digital scale model. So instead of spending money on those physical forms, you can create a digital form. And nowadays you can actually put this online too. So you, you can't take a physical one and actually put it online, but you can take a digital one and you can put it online like this, okay? Oops, I just completely got out of my presentation, so I'm going to start her back up here. Okay, so let me just uh, give me one second to readjust my screen, and then I'll be uh, on my way again, so I apologize. Okay, here we go. Next, virtual reality. So virtual reality in the sales center was pretty cool. They put on a VR headset that could actually walk around, so it's not your... Uh, I mean, you can go with a VR where you just look around. This experience I show you here uh, was was beyond that, where they can actually walk around physically and see what it's actually like uh, to be actually be in the sales center. You just basically have to make sure no one actually sits down because it's virtual. Um, that would actually be kind of funny, but it's not very good for sales to see people fall. Um, the next one is innovations in the actual sales center itself. So again, this is before COVID. Instead of building presentation centers and not only spending a lot of money and then tearing it down. I mean, it's, it's hard to see sales centers just come up and then they just rip them down and after a weekend. It's such a waste on the environment. If you're trying to build a brand where you're like a green builder and you're an innovative builder, why not show that by just using shipping containers? So this is one example for national. You can see, you can see it miles away. Uh, and then in the bottom uh, left is back in 2014 in Leslieville again, a shipping container and is actually used, it was put on site, it was used to block the ugly site itself because it's just dirt basically. And uh, we basically sold out luxury towns. And this is way back in 2014 using the first versions of um, Oculus. Uh, I got a question here. Why did you show, okay, take my time. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. Okay, so the next one, I'm gonna go, I'm hitting the wrong button. Okay, pop-up sales events. This is pretty cool. Like you've probably heard about pop-up shopping, but this is the same idea. So we had an outdoor park event. That whole tent hosted a full VR experience. So people could essentially walk around uh, the homes, uh, but they could do it outside the main park. So this is in Huntsville, right by the water. It's really cool where you can be out in the water and then in a moment, next moment, you could actually be walking through these virtual model homes in VR. There is a video here, but given time, I'm going to skip the, the event video, basically. Another example for a pop-up event was actually in a restaurant broker event. So in this case, the builder was cooperating with uh, broker agents. And so we actually brought the entire experience to them in a nice restaurant. And we actually brought the VR experience to that, too. So I'm going to skip again that video, just given time. But then what happened is then the pandemic hit. And then everyone basically, everything uh, was on lockdown. And the builders started, we just got a lot of calls saying, oh my gosh, we have the sales center launch. We can't even have people visit it. What are we going to do? 
So what the pandemic did is it forced builders, it just fast forward innovation to grand scale because, and and personally, I think it, it's it's actually much better for, for uh, consumers. Uh, obviously, I don't mean the pandemic's great for consumers. I mean, the buying experience a lot, a lot better for consumers, just to make that differentiation there. Um, so before, builders always would, re- often would restrict information, right? So you basically go to a builder website and then, what you would do is you basically see a registration page uh, and that's about it. And it was difficult too, because we would work with a builder. We'd have all these marketing materials. We could allow them to walk through the homes. We had everything, but for some reason, it was just kind of part of the strategy. We're just gonna have a registration page because the thought was, we don't want to give all the information away because then they won't even bother showing up to the sales center. They need to go to the sales center and generate those long lineups. That was kind of the, kind of the way of thinking. I've always kind of had a different approach to it. I think that people like the ex- Amazon, the experience, or whatever you take it, or just look at any other industry for that matter. Even like the thing about the car industry where people can go online and do all the research that they want. So before they even like, for example, in the cars, before they come to a dealership, generally your customers know a lot of information. And the reality is, is if the dealer, the car dealers didn't put that information online, people just skip them. The pandemic happened and all of a sudden information had to be put online and builders went almost the opposite extreme. They actually ended up putting everything online to the point they put the purchase agreement online, like everything. Right. So it was a complete switch. And I think it was pretty amazing. So before this is before the pandemic, this is kind of what it looked like. The buying cycle, if you're familiar with the buying cycle, the different stages of the buying process, people would start with a, I need to buy a home, but I can't get any information. I better go down the sales center to find out more. Right. So you look at the recognizing the need for a purchase. Then you look at evaluating the purchase options, evaluating purchase options, the uh, resolving concerns about the purchase, making a purchase decision, implementing the purchase, all that sales center. Then after the pandemic hit and what happened, that moved online. In fact, if you look at the entire wheel here, even implementing the purchase in some cases is actually happening online. There's a few software providers out there uh, like Sailfish that enable a lot of this. They have FinTrack compliance. They can do photo ID validation. It's pretty darn cool stuff. Um, so it, you can even do potentially part or all the implementing the purchase even at online. Um, but many we're still seeing many builders though are still doing the entire, most of the buying journeys online, but then they might just meet for five minutes just to do the, the signature still in the actual physical sales center or the pop-up site that they have. So that's kind of what's happened. So. The question is then is how do you actually create an amazing online experience? And one of the ways is virtual tours. So we'll just dive into this. Now you're you're probably very familiar with Matterport. It's the same concept, except that would be applied to the actual model. So if you've built a model home, but then the sales center is closed, they can still put the model online using a Matterport. Same kind of um, concept that you're probably familiar with. Um, The next one is virtual tours of pre-construction. So I'm gonna show you uh, an example video here of, 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 a, of a non-existent home. So you can see there's some similarities to a Matterport tour where you can basically look around. Um, again, the videos may play, uh, they may stutter a lot. So hopefully you can see some of this, but the idea is that as you can see here, the customer can go online and they can walk around both the virtual versions, virtual tours, I should say, of both the physical model homes if they don't have a physical model home, they can walk around the virtual version. And this is a virtual version. So this is not a real home. This is basically we're using computer graphics. Uh, we generate this, this version. Um, yeah, so that's that. I'm going to skip to the next video now. Um, oops, let's go back next. Okay, the other cool thing about virtual tours too, and I believe Matterport supports this, is you can actually hold up an iPad. So let's say the customer's at home and they want to get the experience of walking around. They can actually do that. So I'm just going to play this video. You can see, hopefully it's coming through. You have an iPad, you can hold it up and it kind of gives you the experience of actually looking around. You can tap, you can move around. So it's kind of like looking at a window into the new home. And the, again, this is an unbuilt home. Um, in this particular example, this particular project, you have a mall home in fact. Um, so that's another thing that you can do, which is pretty cool experience. People really, really, customers love it when you can do that. All right, I'm getting near the end. So the virtual sales center. So what happened is when the pandemic hit, um, we needed a much better way to sell homes online. So we brought the sales experience from the physical sales center and we put it online. 
Um, in a given time, I'm not going to have time to show many examples. I'll just kind of show you one right now. So this is actually in a web browser, Maximize web browser. And so basically what you can do, this is a project in Huntsville, 175 towns. So basically what you can do is you can see the different block types here. So the different colors, blue, red, and yellow for different types of town blocks. And then what you can do is like in this case, I'm looking at a stacked town with a flat roof, kind of highlights those on the 3D site plan. You click on it, it can show you the town, right? Now, one of the complexities of townhomes is sometimes it's really hard for buyers to understand like which unit is which. And here we highlight that. So you're like, okay, that unit, I'm gonna click on it, click on the floor plan. I'm gonna be looking up nice and close, right? So you kind of kind of drag and move around. This works on any device too, mobile phones, tablets, you name it. Um, and you can actually share this with a customer. So you can actually, in the, I don't know if you know, you can see in the bottom right, there's a link. You can copy that, send it to customers so they can actually, after sales call, can directly go to those plans. You can actually walk around them instantly online. So again, this is all online. This can be done in a self-serve capacity, uh, which we're seeing a lot of, or it can also be used for Zoom calls, Google Meet calls, what have you. It can be used for both um, pre-launch events just to help uh, Buyers basically answer their questions, walk them through before the big launch event. So they come armed with information, knowing what they want to buy. Um, and in this case, I'm going to the floor plans page. So typically we see buyers go either from the site plan perspective or the floor plans perspective. I'm walking around again this way. So you can see, you can walk around. And one of the things I'm going to show you in a second is you can actually walk around two units at the exact same time. So compare left side and right side. So I'm going to look at type A, as you see on the left. I'm going to go to ST2A, two different plans. I'm going to click on each, right? So you can kind of see them side by side. But now I actually want to walk around them side by side. So you can do that as well. So basically, after you looked at the plans, you just close that out. And then you basically hit the begin tour, and they can walk around both. Um, this project was launched very quickly because the sales end of uh, uh, the sales center was to launch actually in April, right after the pandemic. We had to put it online. Our new version, the quality is even much higher, but this kind of gives you an experience. It shows you kind of how that can look like. Um, if I go to the, the next slide now, we have another one, another project in Florida. I'm not gonna go through that, but it's a very similar concept of basically enabling customers to um, walk through homes online. Again, this is a virtual home. This is not a real home. Um, so they can go through this way. They can go through a 360 site plan, click on buildings. They can see the units on the building, click on the building. You see, so there's a lot you can basically what I'm saying is that you can take the entire buying experience. You can put it online. So when a customer is ready to buy, they show up ready to buy. Like whether you sell, you want to do the uh, purchase agreement online, if that capability is there, or whether you just want to host an event where it's just like 15 minutes, customer comes in, signs the paperwork. Again, the difference here, what I'm trying to say is in the past, we're not talking about customers showing up and then, um, signing a line in 15 minutes without any prior information. Like they're, they're not like reviewing the floor plans, going through the elevations and they're making a decision in 15 minutes, right? What we're talking about here is different. We're talking about they go online, they know what they wanna buy, they've had the time to actually meet with an agent online. And then so when the, they have the 15 minutes to make a decision, well, they've already made the decision, right? It's more about the paperwork. So it's very, very different experience. It's a much better experience. Okay, so on to the next slide. Um, so I just want to reiterate that now after the buying cycle has really moved online, and now that you've kind of seen that example, you can see really how that decision can be done online. So the next question I have is, what will the pre-con buying experience look like after the pandemic? Like, what, what do you guys think? Do you think it's going to go back to the old way, strict information online, everything falls under the sales center? Do you think it's going to stay the virtual way um, where most of the sales done online and now sales centers are basically places where people, you know, basically do a tour of a model and then sign the agreement Just kind of, or what do you guys think? And hopefully my, um, I'm still online. Uh, we do a quick check. Can anyone hear me? Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. Cool. We can hear you. Perfect. All right, so what do you guys think? After the pandemic, what's gonna happen in the pre-con? Think things can stay online, more online? They can do both. Awesome. Go back the old way. You know, I hope not, but it could. I wouldn't be surprised. All right, let's see. I'm gonna make a prediction here. It's not really a prediction, actually. It's kind of like in between. I, 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 okay. 
What do I think is going to happen? Before, information was restricted. Especially, I mean, depending on, like, I mean, when I say restricted, especially when you get into like VIP exclusive events, heavily restricted. During, information is completely the opposite. It's available online. Even purchase agreements are online. After, probably a blend. I think it depends on the builder, it depends on their brand, and it depends on their capacity and their appetite for innovation. I think really what's going to happen is online, I'm really hoping information is not restricted anymore because, again, that may that really is not looking at in the best interest of the customer. I mean, when you restrict information from the customer, that is not doing them, in my opinion, any good. Um, I think what will happen too, I'm hoping will happen, is that when they have a big announcement for a launch event, builders will now offer before the event virtual showings, allowing people to go online, answer their questions, overcome their objections, so that when they show up, they have the agreement of purchase sale, that's all done, all the check boxes are done, they review it with their lawyers, they've got all their questions answered, they come with the deposit, the check, everything in hand, but they do so in a very relaxed way, as opposed to the pressure way. Um, the sales center is not going away. Um, I think it's going to be, I think the model home is really key. It's going to continue to be key for the touch and feel experience, but it's, I think it's going to be used later on in the sales cycle now. So kind of like moving people online, they're more qualified to come in, less leads, more qualified people, hopefully. So salespeople are just focusing on the people who are actually ready to buy. That's what I'm guessing. I'm hoping. Um, sit, yeah. So great comments, a blend. Save money, save time, avoid traffic. Awesome. I agree. I hope so. Um, and I also would encourage, I think in the generally in the building industry, there's a lot of weight on the marketing side of the builder because they're the ones who control the budgets. I really, really wish that builders would take stronger consideration of the sales team because they're the ones who are working with customers. They're the ones who really understand where people are people's concerns are, where their objections are. They can take all that information. When they do another project, they can immediately overcome a lot of these objections. They can take this information. And for the next project, they incorporate all these lessons. Because if you look at Eric Reese's book, The Lean Startup, it's all about innovative product mark, uh, development. And take all that information. And who knows all that information best? The sales team, obviously. That information should then be relayed back to the marketing team. I really hope that happens more. Some builders have an, more of an integrated marketing sales team, but a lot of them are a little bit disjointed. Um, so how can sales agents deliver the best buying home experience possible? Whether, I think it's about being flexible with the customer. Like instead of fo forcing them to follow our way of selling, give them the virtual showing option if they feel comfortable. Or if they prefer face-to-face -face purely, then do the in-person showing rep or maybe combination. Really, it's about being adaptable, flexible, and offering the best buying experience. It's not about the builder's experience, but the customer experience. Really, that's where I think, I, I'm hoping at least, that's where things go after the pandemic. Okay, so quickly, it's 536. Um, I, any questions for me? Well, if you have any questions, my email is there. I'm gonna leave it with this. If you are interested in pre-construction, uh, let Mustafa know, let me know, reach out. My email is there. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. I love to connect. I love pre-construction. I like the way things have been changing. It's really unfortunate that the, that the pandemic pandemic is here, but I'm, I'm really hoping that, you know, there's a, when it comes to the buying experience, there's a little bit of a silver lining where the new home buying experience will just be much, much better. If you're into this at all, whether you are more from helping buyers make a purchase from a buying side or whether you want to get into representing builders and listing uh, projects with builders, if any of that really interests you, uh, please reach out. Um, also, I'd love to hear your thoughts, get your feedback too. Um, this industry can't change with any one company or person. It kind of takes a joint effort. I think we can all do amazing things in the industry. Um, so yeah, please do reach out. My email is there. My LinkedIn is there. I would love to hear from you. So I think that's about it. I'm going to leave it just for one more minute. There's any other questions? How much does a model cost? Okay, great. Uh, how much does a model cost? You know what? It's one of those things where uh, it, I, I know everyone hates the question. It depends, but it does actually, because uh, we work with some builders who have all their eggs, uh, the, the, sorry, their ducks in a row, not eggs in a row, ducks in a row, 
we can then take that, we can create a virtual model and we can do that relatively quickly. But if it's one of those things we also often get in the case where we have really a mess of architecture files, things don't line up, that's more expensive. But basically what you're looking at, it's not like a Matterport tour. You're not spending hundreds of dollars, you're spending like many, many thousands of dollars typically. And typically it's not just a virtual model that we're looking at. We're usually looking at the entire buying experience. We're looking at the entire sales experience. So that does include virtual tours, but it's more than virtual tours. It could be like an interactive site plan or 3D site plan, depending on the elevations. There's a lot more to it uh, than just virtual models. All right. I think I'm going to leave it with that. Okay. Um, I'm going to then um, stop this present, stop sharing. Let me see. Or at least try to stop. I'm going to Okay, uh, Mustafa, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me, David? Yes, I can. All right, awesome. I think we're still live, so I'm gonna transfer it over to you. I'm gonna leave the presentation. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been great. And thank you all for the comments too. Awesome, wow. What a great way to wrap up ZoloCon. Thank you, David. That's always no super problem. fascinating. Uh, when, when you share some of those 3D worlds, um, you know, my mind is always like blowing up and, and I'm so excited to learn more about some new technology. And uh, I encourage all of you to reach out to David and uh, get a tour, get a demo. Uh, that uh, property, I think it was in Huntsville. That was actually something that David and InventDev built, that 3D model. Um, okay, well, thank you everyone for spending the entire day with us. Our final session group is now open. We have several interesting dis discussions still going on and you're welcome to check out by clicking the sessions buttons on your left. Also exciting that networking is about to begin now too. To participate, participate, click the networking button on your left and prepare to be randomly paired with one of your colleagues for a chat. Oh, and one last thing, you will need to let your computer access your video and mic. Zolo. It's been an absolute pleasure. I want to thank you again for spending the whole day with us. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the sessions and the networking. And we will see you at ZoloCon 2022.